Hello and welcome to Model Kit Stuff and welcome to the first of two first impressions videos today that are going to be focusing um, on uh, diorama buildings, both of them from Mini Art. Um, there are some uh, differences. This is the more simpler one and then there'll be a second video later which has a street scene and two buildings. So um, this is the first one we're going to look at. So this was a new tool from Mini Art back in 2009. Um, the kit number is 35538. It is still available. Uh, a number of places are stocking it right now, so it is a, a current kit from uh, from many up. And it is 135 scale. And on the box we see uh, a colour uh, representation of what it could look like when you've finished painting it up. Um, so it tells us that it's a ruined German Gastoff. Now, a lot of buildings tend to be um, ruined for, for 135. My intention, actually, will be to restore this, but we'll talk about that come the time, because I don't want this to be a ruined building. Um, on the side of the box, we have some images of it built up and painted, which are really nice, inspiring, and gives you some, some uh, ideas. Um, we've got basically um, on the ends, both ends is what you've got on the box top and then on this side you've got the sort of um, a little description, uh, age warnings, health and safety, contacts and so on. So let's have a look. Inside the box we have the typical mini art packaging. We've got all the items heat sealed in a bag that are a bit loose and then we have Again, typical instructions for their VAT form kits. Let's talk about that first. Unlike their um, full um, model kits that are um, made from styrene and on sprues and just like any other plastic kit, um, they come with a, a nice, colourful build manual. Um, the, the diorama accessories don't. Um, they all come in this uh, black and white sheet format where you get um, one sheet or several sheets depending on the size of the kit. Um, and they almost sort of look photocopied. <laughs> maybe, they, maybe they are, I don't know. Um, but what you get on the front is um, a little sprue shout out. Now I say sprue shout out because all the accessories for their buildings are the same. Uh, that can cause you a problem if um, like me, you're planning to put several of them together because they all have the same front door and, uh, and window sizes and so on and so forth. But you basically get a number of these sprues depending on how many shutters or doors or window frames of a particular size you need. So they have one standard sprue and you'll get the number that you need to cover what's being done on that building. And it's the same with their gutters. They have a standard sprue for gutters and downpipes, uh, and you'll get as many as those as is needed to cover the size of the job. So in this case, we've got three of these sprues and two of the gutter sprues. Um, then we've got a very little key um, and that says multi do multiples. Um, that symbol is for a remove, and that symbol is optional, and that's pretty much all you've got. Then straight away we're into the build steps and we're building up uh, the door in its frame, um, then putting the handles on and then moving to a window that has um, two opening windows within a, a single frame that you have to divide. Um, now these plastic parts, they get absolutely hammered. They're in pretty much all of their um, diorama kits and so they produce tons of them and so they tend to be quite flashy. So there's a lot of clean up on these generally. Then as we move to step four, we are doing the front face of the building and how Mini Art um, 
buildings work is there is always um, a front face and a back face and you have to marry them up. Um, we'll have a look at that more when we look at the parts. Um, but you can see them there being married together. It's the same with the uh, sidewall sections and then they get assembled afterwards. Now, there's different ways of doing it. I like to do it a slightly different way. If you've been watching my um, Tiger builds, you'll have seen me putting together one of these buildings and how I go about it. Then if we flip over to the other side, uh, we have the remainder of the steps. So step eight deals with building up the roof, uh, which has some internal rafter um, detail because it's a damaged roof. Um, then we have a floor section, um, adding the roof, adding the, the floor section, which will also give us a ceiling for in there, building up the um, downpipes, building up the gutter. It's telling us there to shorten it um, and to remove some of these tabs. Um, basically, the tabs come out of both sides, and it depends which way round you want to have the gutter running and where the downpipe is, which side you cut off. So it's a well thought through product really. Um, and then we build up the uh, downpipe sections um, to the outlet and the inlet. And that is pretty much your build done. Add the doors, add the windows that you built. So that's it for the instructions. Um, the instructions are then complemented uh, by instructions on their website and it's always worth having a look. They've got some little videos and talkthroughs which give you the, the very basics at least. Okay, so the first piece out of the box, now we've unpacked everything, is the um, shop front and it tells us that it's a, a gassed off uh, Kaiser. Um, if you wanted this for um, a different country, you didn't want the building to be German, um, it is recessed, so if you sand it off, you're going to lose it. But you could remove it, um, put some plastic card on the back where you've got holes, fill it, smooth it off, and, and that would be perfectly fine. You can get um, shop signs and things like that from uh, all sorts of companies like True Earth, for example. Um, so what you have is a, a VAT-formed um, front piece. You have to... Um, remove the windows and the door um, apertures there, um, but it's very crisply moulded for um, vac form. You've got texturing on some of the stonework. We've got broken uh, plaster um, and plaster cracks and, and so on and so forth. Um, the only thing that you have to do other than remove these um, is clean off these little pips. I'll show you, you get these little lumps. There's some there, there's some there. Um, you can see them there. They just need to be removed. Some of them will cause um, a hole. Um, most of them won't. Um, yeah, um, so that's what you basically do. I think um, it's a nice representation. It's all uh, nicely done and if you're looking for a ruined street I think that looks the part now personally I'm going to use this on a street that's not damaged so um, the fact that this is all vac formed means it's easy for me to work with to fill all the plaster smooth it all off and and restore it so that's what I'll be doing uh, come the time but I think that looks really nice our next piece has um, another two parts on that is for the inside of the roof, and you can see those little nubs more clearly there. Um, and this will be uh, one side of the floor, probably the upper side. Um, and then there's some form of strip of wood there for something. I didn't, don't remember seeing that in the instructions. Um, but again, you just cut this out. Um, you marry two parts together, so you might have to adjust the ends to make the two parts fit, particularly if they're going in at an angle. Um, but yeah, um, you need to glue them together before you paint them up, but generally they fit together fairly well. Now if I show you the roof section, 
um, which has got broken tiles and you can see through them to the roof slats which is really nice and broken roof slats and rafters um, that will go on top of that and you can see how they would fit together now there is that overhang but that's supposed to be there so yeah I think the detail of the parts is really nice um, you, this is a different shape than other roof tiles they do, so that's nice to see. Um, and obviously, this is the front edge, so actually this is your ridge point, I think. I think that I'm right in saying that, so you've basically got a massive hole in the roof. So this is our back piece. It's exactly the same principle as the front piece. You have to remove the windows and the door. But you can see we've got detail there. So if you want the windows open so you can look in, you will be able to see... Um, some detail um, and you can paint it up, put curtains and furniture and people in, whatever you want to do. Um, what I would say though is if you're having shutters on that are going to be closed, which is um, what is shown in some buildings that they do, then it's worth leaving one of these in, either in the front one or the back one. It just adds for a bit of stability um, and ease when you're putting it together. Um, I find that it's easier once you've cut these out to glue little tabs in on this side, which helps you locate the two halves together when you marry them up. Um, but otherwise, um, there's some nice detail in there. Again, just got to clean up the nubs a little bit, and that's ready to go. So the remaining parts are to deal with the side walls, and we've got a piece here which deals with one of the floor stroke ceilings. Um, I think this is probably a ceiling section and you might want to have a play with that and make some openings. Because the material is so thin, um, you can do what you want. You can cut around these rafters and make some gaps between them so that it looks a little bit more realistic. It's all down to your uh, how much effort you want to put in in your imagination and, and whether it, indeed it's going to be visible or not when you've done it. But there's lots you could do with that. Um, the side walls, we've got internals and externals. So the internals have gaps there for your um, uh, floor levels. Um, and that is probably, I'm guessing, the front face here, um, which which will run underneath the um, roof when it overhangs. That's what I'm guessing without consulting the instructions. Um, but you can see the detail is nice. The texture on the brickwork is really really nice um, it, it's a little bit soft molded but that's what you're going to get with, with vac form um, it's not like resin buildings where there, there might be stronger detail but you can do things like um, uh, use textured paints or put texture in your paints to to um, change that around a little bit if you wish to personally I find if you're putting some matte paints on that you get the right finish put a wash on it and it and it looks perfectly good to the eye um, these can be a little bit tricky to cut out if you're not sure what you're doing i do have a, um, a quick tips video coming up soon which will show you exactly how i go around removing these um, it's not difficult once you get into the technique and once you've done a few you'll get your own way of working um, but yeah i think the level of detail is great um, they go together okay, lining them up can be a little bit tricky, um, you just have to have a little bit of patience, take your time, but the detail level is great for the price of them, I think you're getting something that's um, got quite a bit of bang for its book really. When it comes to doors and windows, they provide, um, in this case, three of these um, to cover that off, um, and they're all identically the same, and the... Um, the advantage of that for them is that they can just put as many of these in as, as they need to cover off the window sizes. So in this instance, we're using some of the bigger windows um, with some of the joining strips so that we can put multiple window frames in. Um, the other advantage for the modeler is that you tend to have lots of spares. So if you're not using shutters, you'll have shutters you can use on something or that you can break down and put in a diorama as debris in a street scene. Um, these um, steel um, uh, railing fences, hardly ever use those, so you end up with quite a few of those if you want. So 
Um, in fact, I've modified them and used them for other things before now. The downside of this approach is that all your front doors always look the same. So it doesn't matter what type of shop or building it is, whether it's in Poland or Germany or Russia, they all have that door. Um, and they all have the same handles and, and so it goes on. So if you build a number of dioramas using all the mini art kits, all the front doors will look the same. So you might want to think about how you're going to maybe modify that or do something different or change the handle yourself, you know, uh, just to make change it around a little bit. Um, so, yeah. Um, the moulding um, can be a little bit flashy. You can see around the railings there. That's fairly typical. Um, and around the um, shutters there, we've got some flash. Um, if you're going to have the door open, you've got some uh, ejector pin marks to deal with, but they're raised, so it's just sand them out, which is good. Um, I've certainly seen worse ones than this in terms of flash around the handles and stuff. Then we've got our door frames, um, which have got a little lip on, so they align really nicely around the door. You can build that separately with no issues. So what they give you is nice enough, just needs a little bit of cleanup. Um, but as I say, there's a bit of limitations if you're using multiples on The same is true of the guttering, which are our, our last parts in this kit. Um, we've got two of the gutter sprues, and as you can see, um, like I said earlier on, they get absolutely hammered. So we get lots and lots of flash on them, and, and um, all the um, diorama sets I've got with these gutterings in, they're all just as flashy. Um, so expect lots of cleanup. And again, it's the same comment as with the other sprue set. Doesn't matter where you are in the world, there is only one style of guttering that Mini Art use. Um, but they go together quite well. Um, I've had no issues with them. The only thing that I would say is that they don't have an end piece. So you'll see that the uh, gutters are open at both ends. Um, and that means you have to put an end cap on yourself out of a bit of plastic card. It's not it's not a big job at all. Um, and I've even used um, I, I've even used some plastic pipe to extend the gutters before now. Um, so yeah, that again, there's a bit of clean up needed, but otherwise they're really good and they um, they can be used left handed or right handed um, downpipe openings. Um, so yeah. Nothing wrong with those. So there you have it, the Mini Art 1 to 35 scale Ruin German Gastoff um, building for um, dioramas. Um, what's my first impression? Um, being familiar with the diorama sets from uh, Mini Art, I have a number of them and built a small number of them. This is very typical of what you get. Um, the quality is great. The detail is great. They're not difficult to put together fairly quick. Um, you don't have issues with, with warpage and stuff like that that you can sometimes get in, in resin kits. Personally, I quite like them. Um, I can understand why they might be an acquired taste for some people, but if you put the effort in and clean them up nicely, you can get something quite quickly that looks really quite the part. So I like this. I think it's a, a nice addition if you're doing a end of war Berlin scene or something like that. That fits in really nicely. Hope that was helpful if you're in the market for one of these kits. Take care, everyone. Enjoy your modelling, and I will see you very soon.